But in this situation, I was on a high from skydiving. He got me at that moment. An accident did happen. And that's fine because accidents do happen in life. We both fucked up many times. We've both done terrible shit. But we've came a long way. Perfect example. Logan Paul was a huge influencer, a huge star. Fucked up. Took a long time off. Learned from his mistakes. And now he's a respectable a respectable guy. You know, he's come a long way. Logan is another one, but we're talking about David now. David nearly killed me. Came back to Poston immediately. While I had my face smashed in, lost all my jobs, couldn't work for a year, and posted like nothing never happened, doing TikToks, doing house tours. Right. But all this stuff, Jeff, you said in your video that this happened and David went along like everything was sweet in his life. You already put this in your video and you covered for him. You told him, okay, let's skydive and everything will go back to normal. That's how you edited in your video. David didn't care about me, but I told him to let skydive and that will make it right. So David is thinking... Okay, buddy, you told me to skydive with you, that everything would be good. I skydived, so why are you still bothering me? That's what David is thinking. I don't want to fucking carve. I don't want money. I want you to risk your life and you not be in control for once. He said he would do it. He goes, you got to do it or else this is all pointless. And I was like, I don't know if that's the right idea. I don't know if anybody should be fucking jumping out of an airplane after what happened to you. He was like, no, you got to finish this. Like, let's make this a positive thing. I was like, okay. And I would have told you right then, listen, no skydiving will ever make it right or ever make you content because justice is an eye for an eye. And as long as David has his eyes, you're going to look at him and be mad about it. That's just how it is. There's no justice in this world. David can give you all the money in the world and you'll still be upset. Rightly so. Rightly so. I'm not saying you shouldn't be. But rightly so. It's resentment. The only thing David could do is kind of mediate it, be your friend and be there for you. And, da, 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 da. and then, yeah, it will kind of dampen those feelings of resentment. But you'll still always be mad because you can be angry and be right in your anger, right? It's called righteous anger. It's okay, Jeff, for you to be upset. If everything went down the way you said it went down, be mad at David and no one will fault you for it. Well, people will fault you for it. You're still going to have somebody that says you got on that rope, right? But you have a right to be mad. You can be mad. And it's just you kind of pretending like you can't be mad or feeling like you shouldn't. And he's my friend and I have to feel good about him. And that, that's what's just making everything all the more confusing. No, you can be mad at somebody. If you, Jeff, feel, and you do feel, you feel this is David's fault. You're even thinking that David did it intentionally. That's what's going on in your head. Okay, fine. Stop trying to be friends with David. If you feel he did it intentionally, why are you trying to be his friend? Do not be his friend. You need to stay away from David, okay? Stay away from, you shouldn't even trust yourself around David right now. I need to live my life. I need my life back. I need to be able to say, David did this shit. Send him to prison. Hey David, take this one. I got a bad feeling about that one. I can handle that one. I'm more experienced. I've been sending David pictures of an ice cream scooper and devices to gouge his eye out just to let him fear losing his eye a little bit too. Because guess what? If somebody did something to me and I think it's intentional, you think I'm willingly going to put myself next to that person? No, I'm like, you and me better stay far apart right now. Far apart. You better stay on your side of the street and I'll stay on my side of the street. That's what I mean. If you think somebody now did something to you intentionally, you treat that seriously. I'm not going to insist on this person be my friend. If you have an inkling that somebody doesn't like you, stay away from that person. No good can come of it. I don't think these guys liked each other. Here's my theory, y'all. There's reasons for these things. There's reasons why Jeff now is saying something's going on. I, I think it's intentional. There's reasons. And I don't know everything. I don't know all the reasons, okay? I don't. I have to go off with what I see and what I hear. And there's something that I saw and heard in their relationship that happened previously. And I know it seems so slight and insignificant. And many more things could happen off screen, right? There's always room for a bunch of stuff to happen off screen. But I'm only telling you what I saw on screen. And I'm going to tell you why. In my head, when I saw what happened, I'm like, listen, this guy doesn't like you, Jeff, from before. And comes right back like this is everybody else is crazy on the internet. I'm not. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the sane one. 
Why is everybody mad at me for? But David was always like that. He did interviews saying, oh yeah, I get everybody drunk and I film them. That's why he's getting all the big deals because he can take the scenery and he can edit and he's on schedule. I think he would have his videos come out, what, what, two, twice a week or three times, whatever it is. He's very prompt, he's editing, he's getting his stuff together, he's very organized in the way he does his things. He has everybody else act a mess, and he's there recording it, he's giving directions, everybody's taking his orders. That's why he gets all the big deals. People want to do business with him. And David, you don't even see him on screen, right? But now people are giving him TV deals where he is on screen. On his own channel, he's not even on the screen, he's behind the camera. I would even argue is that the people he had around him were the entertaining ones. He's kind of just boring and dry. He's just a laugh track. But he has an eye to capture what he needs to capture and he knows what to put in a video. He's getting deals. And yeah, you guys are the, um, the ones that are like off the rails kind of things because all of you guys talk about, you know, you're being, um, okay, see, this is what you guys do to yourself and why David can play this role, even though I saw through it because it's so obvious. He has you on as the ex-con. He has Seth on as the black guy. He has uh, Todd, Todd with his, it wasn't Todd into all these kind of uh, drugs and stuff. And he has um, Big Nick was someone he could make fun of. Jason Nash. He has Jason Nash around him acting like he's not 40 plus year old men with an ex-wife and children. He has that man acting up on camera. So yeah, David can go around saying, oh, look at all these folks over here acting up and I'm just here filming everything. He looks like the sane one next to all of you guys because you guys make yourself, oh, Jonah. He has Jonah just, I don't know what Jonah's up to. You guys make yourself a circus and he's there filming it. Okay, I have to say this because you guys don't get what's going on here. Howard Stern is what these people are following. If they don't even know about Howard Stern, they're following Howard Stern's blueprint. Howard Stern was the quote unquote same people who always had all these cast of wacky people around him. Howard Stern will show up to work on time, leave on time, never miss a day of work. And he'll have all these raunchy, weird, crazy things happening on his show. And he would sit there like, oh boy, look at that. Okay, on to the next cast of wild characters that come in. He wasn't wild and crazy, but he surrounded himself with wild and crazy. And I'm using quotation marks. And he would get it on film. He would get it on the radio. But he was never that person. He may pretend or whatever, but he was never that person. And so all these people are goofing off. And yeah, they may get some money, but they're not going to get Howard Stern money. That's uh, uh, David. The people around David will get some money, but they're not going to get David money. David was making money upon money upon money, piles and piles and piles of money. You guys aren't going to get what he's getting. You guys will get something, but you're not going to get what he's getting. So yeah, that's, I was going to do a whole thing on it, but I might cut this out. But that's the secret. You're not supposed to be wild and crazy. You're supposed to have wild and crazy around you, but never be wild and crazy. David figured it out, that out. I don't think David is a Howard Stern fan, but that's the blueprint. You get people around you like that, but you don't be that. And then you're able to squeak through life and have an entertaining show and have people listen. That's what you do. That's what these people are doing. And I'm seeing it in all different places. And some people are pulling it off better than others. But that's what David found out. That's what you're supposed to do. I don't know. I think anybody would like swinging somebody from a crane would have been a little bit more delicate with an actual human. Well... You're swinging somebody from a crane right there is where you're supposed to stop. Like that's not supposed to happen, right? You guys understand that that in of itself is ridiculous to do. You understand that, right? But you guys sit down and watch YouTube and you see some other guy doing it on YouTube and you think, wow, it's cool. We're going to do it the same thing too. That's why I'm saying this YouTube stuff is dangerous because people are actually not seeing these other people who actually have the setup and actually have medical staff and you don't see how much they practice ahead of time to film this stunt. And you're just going to take a cast of your friends and you're going to go out and, and recreate what happened. And again, don't swing people from cranes, okay? Bad idea all the time. Even if it worked out, it was still a bad idea. Don't do it. <laughs> it's not worth it. The, the, that machine is heavy equipment. Like they use it for demolition. It's just insane. We even got into it afterwards because you told me I was an idiot for getting on it. Yeah, I was kind of upset. I should never have said that. See, here it is. See, I'm telling you, that's it. I, I, I missed this part. I think I skipped through this part the first time, but that's it right there. It's like you tell somebody this is what happened and then they're going to say, oh, you shouldn't have done it. 
it's a habit. I know. I have to stop myself too. We do this. Jeff, even your friend saying that to you, it's coming from a good place. Your friend knew you could have died and he didn't want you to die. So just to see that you would have died over something so silly, it's like you shouldn't have done it. But it's more a relief that he still has you and you're still here. You're still in this life. But it's just that fear like, oh my goodness, it could have went differently. But we have to realize too, as other people on the other side, when someone gets injured or is injured or something bad happens, an accident, even how weird stunk gone wrong, bite your tongue because it's never the right thing to say, ah, oh, you shouldn't have, oh, I told you so, oh, why did you? Just don't even go there. The person is sitting in that bed already thinking worse. Everything that you said in worse. So don't even try and think you're enlightening the person. The person already knows they shouldn't have done it. Like they're paying the ultimate price. If he died is one thing. He didn't die. He's alive now and he has to like live with it. That's his reminder. He doesn't need anybody else to remind him. What I am going to remind him though is, again, you don't cover for people who do wrong. That you don't know, so that's what I'm telling you. But all the other stuff, I know you know, so I'm not going to like reiterate, oh, you shouldn't have done it. Well, that's obvious. I know you know, I wouldn't tell you not to have done something that you already did and that you now know never to do again. But then again, didn't I see him do like that box challenge on TikTok and he was walking up on those crate, the crate challenge? Jeff, I don't know what's up with you. Like, why did you do Then I saw you do that and then I'm like, listen, listen. I don't know, Jeff. I don't know. But maybe now you have this weird... Okay, I'm not even going to fault you for that. Okay, let me just take that back. <laughs> okay, but just see a therapist. That's what you need to do. Just see a therapist. But I was just more like... No, no, it's cool. I was more like hurt. Like, damn, why the fuck would you do that? But it was like... I get it. Like, you know, it was just shit moment. being done. Heat of the moment. Like, you know, peer pressure, content... And it's just like, shit was just happening. Like, you know, I probably would have like done something. I done stupid shit too. Like, you know, without. Yeah, you just caught me at an emotional time. Yeah. And then that's why our like, friendship you know, kind of. I was just more mad. I was just more mad uh, that it happened to you. I wish other people that did it had feelings towards it. I don't I don't know. I, I really don't. I'm not like an influencer. And I and like, I kind of like this few influencers that I watch and follow. Like, I kind of fucking don't really like the social media shit because i feel like it's all fake bullshit like i get it it's the world that we live in nowadays but people show you and who who they are by editing what they want to show you so it's never real yeah but that's not david david shows you everything in four minutes you can figure out david in four minutes what was his videos four minutes and 20 seconds yep that's enough time if you watch enough of those videos to figure him out. He does not know how to edit himself. All you need to do is see him laughing at people in pain, people who are being traumatized. He's laughing. That's all you need to see. Boom. I don't need to see anything else. You think people that are hurt, that are bleeding, that are in pain, you think it's funny. You have blow torches in your house. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know anything else. You guys, you get it? You get it. David is not that guy. David, what you see is what you get. Boom. Your eyes were lying to you. You weren't believing what you were seeing. You made him into something he never was. You're calling him my friend. He was never your friend. Did you really, Jeff, think that David was your friend? Like, for real, for real? You guys were friends. You guys talk on the phone. You guys tell each other your deepest, darkest secrets. You guys just go to the movies just to chill. Was David really your friend? That's what I'm thinking. I'm like, David was never your friend. So it's okay if you're going to use that word to kind of sell your story. Like, my friend did this to me. But I'm saying just me and you, one-on-one, -on -one, for real, for real. You know David wasn't your friend. Todd was your friend. I know you and Todd were friends and you like Todd and I think you just hung around David because Todd was there and David, yeah, you know, it's good to be in his videos and stuff. But like Todd was your friend. Was David your friend like Todd was your friend? No. David was just a guy in the group that you had to hang around with because everybody liked him. The people you liked liked him. So you kind of fit in. You kind of got in where you fit in. But he wasn't really your friend. This is me, me talking. I don't know. They could just cut. They could snip. It's like plastic surgery, you know? Everybody got fucking plastic surgery in Hollywood, and then they try to, like, downplay somebody that can't afford nice teeth or, like... I had to eat Botox jokes, bad, botched-up plastic surgery jokes for years, and I'm fine with that. I could take jokes, but I'm just saying, I'm fucking let down. It just sucks because there's a lot of other friends involved that I really love. 
Boom, that's Todd. Todd, his is his bestie. I don't know if who his other friends are. I know he did like podcasts with some of these other Vlog Squad people, but Todd's his bestie. And he knows walking away from David, you have to leave Todd behind. Oh, you're gonna have to leave Jason behind too. You're gonna have to leave these people behind. They're not going with you. They are not. You're gonna be cut off. Deal with it. And you know, I got out of a breakup and jumped right into this friend group that I love so much. I, it was just so such perfect time and because I was in such a bad spot, such a low point in my life, and I found all these guys. And it sucks that I might lose some of them. Hopefully, some of them are smart enough to realize that, you know, just realize right and wrong. Because I, I feel like it's obvious here. No, they're not. You see how it took all of this for you to realize, Jeff? You have to go through all of that. You have to go through nine surgeries. It wasn't after one surgery, two or three, that you realize. After your ninth surgery, you're now coming out and saying it was wrong. These people haven't had their first surgery yet. So don't expect them. You can't, Jeff. Just tell you now. It's not like a big, dramatic, if you're my friend, here's the line. You cross that line and step over here. Don't even set yourself up like that. Just don't. Because they're not going to step over the line. They're not. They'll let you go by the wayside like they let everybody else go by the wayside. You're not special. Right? It's David. It's David's crew. Jeff has his own crew now. Jeff made his own crew with his own little gang of misfits around him. He has his crew. That's your crew. And if someone were to go to people in your crew now and saying, yo, Jeff's a bad guy. You need to come over to our crew now. Your crew, Jeff is going to say, no, nah, no, nah, we're cool where we are. You're telling those people, David's crew, to leave him. And like I said, you were never part of David's crew. You were brought in there. I think Todd brought you in. So it's not that David actively sought you out. He sought out the people that are in his crew now. Those are his crew. Those are his people. They think he does nothing wrong. They are coddling him. They are enabling him. They're hanging out in his mansion. They're in his videos. He's in their videos. It's not about right and wrong. It's about them doing the same thing you did when you were there. And the same thing Big Nick did when he was there. And the same thing Seth did when he was there. Everybody was fine with what was going on until it happened to them. That's how it goes. It's not like you saw what happened to somebody else. It would have been more honorable, Jeff, if you saw what happened to that girl that night and you would have been, peace out, dudes. Yeah, you guys aren't the clique I thought you were. Let me go find somebody else to hang out with. You know what I mean? Then that's a, a different thing. But you only left because something happened to you. Bad happened to you, right? You are now like, oh, this is what's going on. But it was always going on. It's just now it's your turn. And it's going to be somebody else's turn in that group too. When I say turn, it's going to be somebody else who's not really in the group, but like on the outside of the group. They can peace out too. And David won't care. David will just go on with his life. He has the people he needs and everybody else can just peace off and, and go. He doesn't care. And you're one of them. He never cared. Um, there's been more stuff that happened. I don't know if we'll leave this in or not, but a uh, fucking <laughs> Casey Neistash just like my Instagram post. That's big. That's. Big. I love that guy. <laughs> that guy made me do triathlons. That's, he, that's that guy big. is actually a full Iron Man. Okay, he also made a documentary yeah. and showed me a clip recently that yeah. really pissed me off. But he did it because he respects me and he's, yeah, my boy. <laughs> Yo, who's the rat now? <laughs> he added that it was Casey here, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it was Casey. We would have found out eventually anyway who did it because he was giving away all the information. Like he said why he was mad because before we didn't know all of this. When he was on the live stream, he was just going off on David, but we didn't know why. Now we know why. Casey showed him the video. He has video evidence of David not caring about him. But like I said, David never cared about him. And he should have got the hint many, 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 many times before. I'm going to show you those hints. So yeah. he showed me <laughs> just to prepare me for what's coming and to prepare David for what's coming. Shout out to Casey Neistat. I love that guy. Um, so yeah, my beef with David, the fact that he is a scumbag friend, a fake friend. Now that the documentary is over, doesn't give a fuck, doesn't text me, doesn't check in at this you told him in that documentary all he had to do was skydive with you and everything would be good. You said that too. And he was like, oh yeah, cool. I, all I have to do is skydive? Perfect. That's how he saw it. All that stuff's nice, knowing that he like went through a little, like, oh fuck, I might die. Whee! Yippee! <laughs> Got like a little tiny ounce of it. That's enough. That's all I need. 
in giving you money for surgery, that's just him doing a favor. Like, oh, I give cars. Okay, I'm going to give you money. It wasn't that he was admitting guilt. He never at any point thought he was guilty. And he thinks you're just whining. I'm telling you not that I think it's right. I'm telling you this is how David thinks, you guys. He thinks he's not guilty. He thinks he has no responsibility. And he thinks he did nothing wrong. Okay? This is how somebody acts when they think they did nothing wrong. They'll look at you and say, why are you crying? I didn't hit you. That's David's mentality. The last surgery... There was literally, the doctor said, we have to move your eye three millimeters. We're going to do two and a half. So we have a half a, half a uh, millimeter of slack. That's fucking this much to go blind. And I couldn't get a text. That's one reason. The other reason, him saying now, flipping the script, saying that, oh, it was fucking Jeff's idea. He's crazy. Complete bullshit. Okay, wait a second. He said it was Jeff's fault. Jeff's just acting crazy. And that worked. He can say that because of what you showed in the video. Jeff, in your own documentary, you made it seem like that, right? You kind of leaned into that narrative because you had David edit your video. So yeah, David can go on and say, oh yeah, it's crazy. He wanted to do it and I just let him. He could say that and it be true, quote unquote, because of the documentary you released implying that so much because you had him edit it he could say that and get away with it that you were crazy to even do it in the first place because guess what it didn't matter how much money you gave david he would never put his foot on that rope david would never do it never this is my my thinking okay so david would never do it so david thinks anybody who would do it is crazy that's what david is thinking because David is, in a sense, like, I'd never do that. He would never do it because he has never done it. That's number two. Number three, they were supposed to cover the hospital bills. They slacked because whatever the fuck they're doing, making stupid vlogs. They didn't pay attention to something that's, I, I would think it's pretty important here. Because the, the bills go to my name. And our agreement was just cover the hospital bills. I don't care about anything else. I don't, I'm not coming after him for money I lost from not being able to work or anything like that. But I got a, a bill that wasn't paid that I didn't know about because I'm not dealing with it. I have Ivan, my assistant, deal with it. And he goes with David's team. And they didn't pay a fucking bill. I got an infraction on my credit now. I go to get a house and I can't get a loan because now I have another. Inf so it's just like things are piling up over and over again. And just try a little bit. One. See, and this is the thing when you, you do something right in the heat of the moment, like he needed people around him. Because I understand Jeff is not thinking about all this stuff. He's sitting in a hospital bed. He's not thinking clearly. For people around him, I, I don't know. Because Jeff is kind of stubborn too, because he has this idea where, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, sue David or whatever. But what he could have done is had lawyers, like whatever agreement he made with David, you had to get, get it written down. You have lawyers look over it and you have to have him sign it or something. Like that kind of an agreement, not no friendly, okay, this is what we're going to do. You pay my bills. Like, no, no, no. You didn't have to actually sue him to get the amount of money you needed. All you needed is to get a lawyer and have your lawyer do discussions with his lawyer. And you have to do it that way. Like, I will take this to court, but I won't if we work it out ahead of time. That's how you had to have done it. Because look, he's missing bills. This is the thing. David is not the David of, what, two years ago when this happened. Or one and a half years ago. David's not the same David. David doesn't have the same amount of money he did a year and a half ago when this happened. David is not doing as well as he was before. David had, what, 20 plus million views on YouTube? Which he didn't care about because he didn't even get AdSense. But he was getting all these sponsorships. That he got a big mansion. David was making a lot of money back then. But remember, those sponsors dropped him. But he still has that same mansion. So he still has bills to pay that he racked up because he was making so much money. Upgraded his lifestyle. And it took a while for him to upgrade his lifestyle. Right? It took a while. So it's not that he got this house right away. No, he was saving for a while to get his big house. Okay, he has his big house. Now the money isn't as big as it was coming in. So he has to cut some stuff. You think he's going to cut his water bill, Jeff, or your water bill? Right? He's not going to cut his water bill. David is going to pay all his bills. And then when the money is run out for that month and he looks at the end of it and sees he still has Jeff's bill, hospital bill to pay, David's not going to pay it. It's not no oversight or whatever. 
His funds are low, his funds are kind of funny right now, and he can't spend as what he used to spend because he sees the income is, I'm sure, drastically different. When he accepted this arrangement, he was thinking you're gonna have one surgery, maybe two. He didn't know it was gonna be nine. He didn't know nine hospital stays. He thought he was gonna just be over and done with with you. He didn't know a year and a half later he was still gonna be paying for hospital bills. Listen, you all, I'm not saying David is right. I'm just saying what's going on in his head. Okay, so David is gonna be like, yeah, I agreed to pay your hospital bills, but I didn't agree to pay your hospital bills because you're getting plastic surgery. You know, he's going to find whatever he wants to justify it and say, listen, this is too much hospital bills going on right now. I had my limit. Maybe, maybe like 500,000 was my limit. Now this bill is coming up to be a million. That's probably what David's thinking. No, I didn't budget for this and I want a new car. Does he even drive? Like, oh, I didn't budget for this and I want a new Iron Man suit. Cost me a little over $10,000. That's how this guy is thinking. You're an inconvenience to him now. So either you sue him because he's not your friend anymore. You can now proceed as you would have if it was some random person that chose to swing you from a rope and do this to you. Do to David what you would have done to a random person that did this to you. I'm saying legally, not like real life backstreet alley kind of thing. No, do what you need to do because David is not going to pay your bills. David's not going to have the money coming in all the time. You think David's rich. David's not as rich as he once was. David bought a house. Buying a house takes a big chunk of your money away, upkeeping a mansion. I'm sure your medical bills are like expensive. So, you know, ugh. you have to get the money from David now, whatever money you can, because he's not going to have any money to give you six months from now or however long you want to wait this out. Get your lawyers to talk to his lawyers, come up with a settlement, and then you, I guess you're going to have to file, um, sign a non-disclosure document that you're not going to talk about it. Either that or take him to court. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Either that or take him to court. But other than that, you're not going to get paid. And you deserve to get paid because you're missing a lot of work. You have a real like condition you have to deal with. And you might wake up one day and because of your injuries, feel like you can't even go to work that day. But you have a job where you're self-employed. You have to get up and go film your videos, right? So I don't fault you for needing money. For those who think I'm trolling or I'm fucking crazy on Instagram, honestly, I could give a fuck because it's the best I've felt in a while getting all this shit off my chest. You know, it feels good to... Uh, cut bad people out of your life and it took a while to see it i don't i don't blame anybody out there if you're dealing with a scumbag i felt like um <laughs> this guy was a fucking scumbag at times but people come around people change and i i for the longest time gave him the benefit of the doubt that he would come along and change all, all this situation there would just give you clarity you know it usually takes things like this it's cr oh. it's ironic that i fucking had an eye injury but now i see clearer than ever yeah it, g it gave you a better it gave you a better fifth eye a clear third eye it gave you it, it opened up what you weren't seeing your judgment was clouded you know, the fame, the shit, the going out, the party, and the making money together, your judgment gets clouded after a while, and then you forget what's real and what's not. And friend is such a strong word to throw around. I never tell people, like, somebody told me, like, oh, we're friends, and I had to correct them. I'm like, no, we're not friends. We're acquaintances. Friends is somebody, like, I could really, really trust. Yeah. I realized my friends when I went to jail. And he's saying when he goes to jail, listen, if you go to jail, what'd you go to jail for? If someone was your friend and you went to jail, okay, you need to go to jail because you were doing the wrong thing. So if someone pulls away from you because of that, I understand that too. Friends, that's asking a lot, guy here. That's asking a lot for your friends to be on top of you when you did something to land in jail. That's a lot to ask for a friend, I have to say. I haven't been in that position where, <laughs> where I had to deal with that, but... You're asking a lot to get like prison calls and stuff in your house. I'd, I'd be weirded out by that, actually. Yeah. And when I was in the hospital, when I was before I went to jail, Jeff showed up in the hospital room when I was on my deathbed for 21 days with tubes coming out my chest. I sent you money for contraband I, yeah, and commissary. Yeah, yeah, for cell phones and stuff. But that got I, you more time but, added on. See what I mean? See what I mean, though? That's what I'm saying. Sometimes people are in jail or whatever. If your friends are dissing and stuff because of stuff like that, you're still in nonsense. Oh, I don't know what the jail life is like. I'm sure it's not easy, but 
I, I don't fault anybody who not don't want to get tangled up in that jail business. Can you imagine? I've never seen a jail cell in my life, but now because so-and-so is in jail, now I have to go to like a prison and see them. Like, that's asking a lot of people. Uh, don't, don't be mad at your friend for not visiting you in jail. Unless you're innocent. If you're innocent, then boom, yes. Then your friend should see you in jail. If you're innocent and you're wrongly charged, then yeah, that's different. If you're guilty, I'm going to let you sit in that cell for a while. You know, just to clear your mind. But being in the <laughs> hospital was worse than being in prison because in the hospital, I actually was dying and I felt helpless and I was on meds and the doctor was telling me, whatever you're doing, you're going to die at 27 years old. And I just remember you being in the hospital room, like, you know, and then you really see who stops their life to come fucking out of their way to come visit you, you know? Well, we shared... <laughs> Look at how we did our doc, and I regret it. I'm happy with the story. It was my first doc we ever made, you know, but there, it could have been more honest. I was just still trying to protect somebody that I thought I cared about, and they cared about me. Yeah, you can't lie in your documentary. If you're making the documentary, like you yourself, and it's about yourself, and then you're lying about what's going on, I'm going to believe you because it's your story, I'm thinking. I didn't know you gave David final edit. And also today, I woke up to a bunch of notes um, on the roast that we did on Bryce Hall that Jason Nash worked very hard to put together. My dear friend Jason Nash, who now I don't know what will happen with him because I know I, I, I just it's tough because I love the guy. And um, he put this roast together. Jason Nash is your dear friend. Leave him out of it. Leave him out of it. Don't give him an ultimatum. Leave him out of it. If we were to believe Trisha, Jason broke up with her because David told him to. If we were to believe Trisha. But I'm just saying all of this to say, leave Jason out of it. Jason already done know where his bread is buttered and that's with David. Don't give him an ultimatum. He's going to stick with David. Don't let him have to choose. Don't embarrass yourself. He's going to choose David. Same with Todd. Same with Heath, same with all those other dudes. And Corinna, Corinna, she needed money. I saw this video, she needed money. What, $500? And David said, I'll give it to you if you tattoo my name on your finger. And she did it. And what did David do? He laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's his childhood friend. He knew that girl. They grew up in the same town. And this is how David treated Jeff. This is how David treats his friends. His friends, longtime friends. Natalie is his friend, childhood friends. They used to play together, sleepovers and stuff, friends. And he smacked her by accident and laughed about it as she drew blood. All I knew is when Corinna was spinning around all wild and you put your foot in that hoop, I'm like, oh, you're going to be spun faster. Because Corinna was his friend from back home and he didn't care about her life to spin her that fast. Much less you. This is how he treats his friends. You think you're going to get any better treatment than his friends? That means he's going to treat you worse than he treats his friends. His friend Corinna, he spun around fast. You, his not friend, he's going to spin around faster. You get it. There's no like level. The level is only up. Is only higher. How high he's going to go. It's not going to go low. That's why I would be scared if David were to say that I'm his friend. I'd have been like, oh, I would be scared if David were to say I'm his friend. Never mind if I'm the person that's next to his friend. I would be terrified. I would like break out in sweat and I would try to run as fast as I could out of there. Because I know I'm going to be treated worse than his friend because he already treats his friends badly. And just the people who helped him put, to, put it together. They wanted to cut a lot of jokes from my set and it, it just pissed me off because, you know, I did the thing because I wanted to do it. One, I, I wrote my own jokes. I, I worked hard on it. I was proud of it. And I said nothing that I wouldn't say in a, a podcast or a YouTube video. And they had 50% of my jokes. These have to go. These are uh, whatever, just too edgy. And I just said, cut my whole set. I don't want to be a part of it. I also don't want to be associated with it because that was before all this happened with David and some of my jokes were on David. And I don't even want to fucking deal with this shit anymore. So I'm done with it. Read the room, Jeff. You're hanging out with David's people and you're trying to goof on David. It's not going to work. 
you have to come up with your own crew and then you can have your orders and you can delegate and treat them however you want to treat them. But this is David's people, Jeff. The same way you let David come over to your house and edit your documentary. That's the same way Jason's going to let David look over his jokes and roasting. You have the um, feeling of being outraged, but you did the same thing. You let David look over your documentary. Jason is letting David look over his roast and cutting out and editing, right? That wasn't Jason. That was David doing that the same way David did it to you. So leave Jason out of it. Jason was in the same predicament you were in. The same reasons why you felt you couldn't tell David no. It's the same reasons why Jason felt like he can tell David no. Give Jason that same sympathy. If you want to still be Jason's friend, stay out of it. Don't drag him into anything. If you want to be Jason's friend, don't even talk to Jason ever again. Really, if you want to be his friend, don't talk to him ever again because you're going to cause conflict between him and David. Leave him alone. Go make your own crew of people. Todd, leave Todd alone. You need to release Todd back into the wild. You need to release Heath. Leave these people. Jonah. Jonah was really funny on your barbershop and in your shows, but you need to release Jonah. Those are David's people. And now you are the outcast. Leave David's people alone. Go um, spend your time um, scouting out and finding all your band of characters that you can have surrounding you and treat you the same way that David's people are treating him right now. That's what you're doing right now because you're getting together your own crew right now. So just make that cut and leave Todd, Jason, and Heath, and Scotty, whatever, leave them alone. All right? They made their choice. They're with David now. They always were with David. You were the newcomer. Again, you guys, I'm not saying what David is doing is right. I'm explaining what's going on here. For Jeff's own mental health, he needs to leave these people alone because these people will never give him what he's looking for. He's looking for some kind of empathy, resolution, some feeling that they have a heart. They're not going to give it to him. Karina now is well off. And she still thinks it's funny that she had to put David's name on her finger. She's still supporting David. Natalie is still supporting David. He slapped her in the face and laughed at her. And then what? They went on his uh, view show acting like it was no big deal. These people don't want to be helped. That was like, Jeff, it's like if I went to you before the accident that happened to you and I said, Jeff, you need to leave these people. They're no good. You need to leave them. You look at me like I was crazy and you tell me to back up, step away from you. That's what you would tell me. So leave these other people alone. Let them have their little aha Oprah moment for them to walk away. But until that happens, they're going to stay where their bread is buttered. By like, uh, Yeah, it's just they try to set, they try to censor my comedy and i'm just against that that's something I, I feel very strongly about i don't want to i don't want my project to be a shit thing uh, maybe, I'll, maybe i'll find a way to fucking get the footage from jason i'm sure he doesn't even care about it i asked him today um if he could cut my set and he was like look jeff i just want to make sure you're good like I, whatever it is to make you happy and and good i don't care about the roast at all and jeff leave jason alone don't drag him into this don't tell your private conversations because he's going to go back and the next time he sees David, David's going to have a big pout on his face. Leave your private conversations with Jason out of it. You're going to have to now be like Trisha and have Jason sneak you into his house. You know, when he wants to see you, he'll sneak you into the house. Like you park up the street and then you tiptoe into his house and then you guys can have your conversation and then you have to walk back up the street to your car. That's what it's going to be like now with you and Jason. Trisha already told us. That's how he rolls. And he'll do that for about three months before he finally cuts you off, right? Just so you know. You know, that was nice. He's it's, a real dude. No, he's not. See, see, you don't see what's going on here, Jeff. No, Jason is not a cool dude. Jason is not your friend. Jason is David's friends, whatever, David's minion, whatever. Jason belongs to David now, right? Jason is David's. Go find your other Jason. You need to find somebody else like Jason that's not Jason. Because Jason has already been taken. David has that chess piece. You need to go find your own chess pieces. Okay. All right. Love all you guys. There we go. Let's go out on a positive note here. Life goes on. Let's all <laughs> pray for David. Pray, pray for David. that he gets some empathy put into him and that he learns and he grows and becomes a better man one day. Accept accountability. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's just funny coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Hearing you say that. You're not going to put baby powder on your ass. You're a grown 26-year-old man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Accept I, I, accountability. <laughs> Look up the word if you don't know what it means. Be accountable for your actions. Don't manipulate it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know, man. 
Be uh, a man. All right, hit us with an outro. You got any more? Anybody else you want to call out over here? H three, death Oh, H three. I'm supposed to go on your show. I'm thinking about it. I got a few list of requests that I need approved. See what you started, Ethan. Nick Avocado started with you. You guys doing your negotiations on screen. Now everybody's gonna hit you up for some money, Ethan. Look at what's going on here. When he said he was going on the H Street channel, I didn't believe it at first when he said it. When Ethan announced it, I'm like, oh no, that's enough time for uh, David to pay off whatever bills that he needs to pay. That's what I was thinking, right? This is before all of this came out. Because I'm like, obviously a payment was missed and David just has to pay up and then Jeff is going to cancel. Because Jeff did this to Ethan before. I remember on Frenemies, Jeff went on and then there was another time where Jeff said he was going to come on again and then it didn't happen. And I remember it was kind of like this kind of weird thing because Ethan announced, <sighs> Ethan announced on like the H3 channel that Jeff was coming on the next episode of Frenemies and then Frenemies happened and then Trisha has to call people out, right? Trisha was like, oh, like, why did you say Jeff was going to be on? I think like Jeff maybe told Trisha he was going to be on and then Trisha told Ethan and then Ethan announced it. Not for Ethan to announce it, but he announced it. And then all of a sudden it didn't happen. So then she was like, why did you say it? And then he was like, it was kind of like a weird moment. But I remember that moment. So I was like, that was weird. But anyways, I was thinking Jeff is going to flake out again. Like, Jeff, this is what's going on. David is not going to come to you. David's going to send Jason to you first. Then he's going to send Todd to you. Then little Scotty. He's going to send these people one by one at different times to call you and friend you up again. So that you'll start feeling bad and like, oh, why did I do this? David's such a nice guy. So it all depends on you right now, Jeff. If you are strong in your stance and that you're over David, that'll all depend on you. Because if you're going to do this wishy-washy thing where all of a sudden you're going to say, oh, me and David are good again. Or I, I want to look past this or whatever. Something that we know David paid you off is going to come off as like so icky. So if you're going to make a stand, stand in your decision, have some kind of integrity about you because again, you cover up when people do wrong. So when I see someone like that, just in general, I'm thinking off already automatically. I'm thinking anything you say, I'm like, er, I can't take anything you say seriously because you present yourself as a person who's untrustworthy. Look, you filmed the whole documentary that you put out on your channel and now you're telling us that's not how the way it went down. You can't do that and then expect people to now believe everything you're saying. You have to be careful about what you say and what you're going to stand behind. You're saying all this stuff now about David. Don't now let David run you a check and now you're going to back everything all the way up. You can't do that. You're going to leave a bad taste in people's mouth. That's why people don't want to even say certain things about you right now because you backtracked before. And I, I need to get the, some things done before I agree to walk in on that show. Don't worry about sending over the address. I already got it. You know the game. But I'm all about making peace, baby. I don't want to have enemies out there. But there's some bad people in this world that deserve it. That's what I'm saying. He does do peace. Because I remember, remember, okay, I told you on my friend of me's Reloaded channel when that issue was going on with David and, and uh, Logan, right? David went into Logan's house and it was like trashing Logan and Logan had it on his security camera. And it was Jeff that went and smoothed things over between David and Logan. Now, I don't know if David even cared enough for Jeff to do it. I think Jeff did it because Jeff was there, maybe bad talking Logan as well. And he just, he'd say he'd do it for David, but he's really doing it for himself because he doesn't want bad blood. I get that. We had that little, that little, it, it, what do you misunderstanding. want to call it? Was it? Yeah. I don't know. A hundred percent misunderstanding. I, I mean, I wouldn't be here today if, if it wasn't, you know? I'm intimidated. Took a sip of the water, man. I'm, <laughs> I, just, I just rolled off a hospital bed. I'm not trying to roll around right now. You know, um, no, that was a complete misunderstanding, and we talked it out. We 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 addressed it offline. You know, for context, if people are watching this and don't know what we're talking about, there were some comments made during uh, roll Logan, a clip. Logan, can, we roll, can we roll it? We don't. Do we, we, don't we, we would we have to put. We would have to we pull really it roll up. Clips on some comments show. made during Logan's luau, uh, David. And, and, and Jeff as well made their way to the podcast set during the party and made some unflattering comments <laughs> that we also joke around about sometimes. So it wasn't a huge deal, but I got a little too comfortable too quick. And I made a joke that was, you know, that Logan doesn't why'd like you, joking about no, that why'd stuff. Why don't you just say it? <laughs> why don't you well, say well, it now well, that well, I'm first here? Of all, first of all, that joke David made. I mean, fucking right. throw David right under the bus. <laughs> but 
yeah, he's done this before. So you see how David will walk into somebody's house and trash them and leave. <laughs> and Jeff, you were there beside David when David walked into Logan's house, trashed him and left the house. You were there. You see the way David operates. David doesn't care. So hopefully this is it. But it never ends. Leave a comment down below if you think I should sue David. <laughs> Leave a comment down below if you're uh, a hundred thousand likes will sue David. An attorney and statute of limitations is up, or if you know anything about that stuff. <laughs> he's not gonna criminally get David. That's what I know right now. He's not gonna say David assaulted him and do he's not doing that. If he does a civil trial, it's not gonna be as cut and dry because David has the money for top lawyers. They're gonna go over everything, every videotape. Like in the video, if you're saying it happened in this way, because I didn't know it happened this way, if you're saying that David begged you to go on and David agreed to a certain type of, uh, what's it called? Spinning. Like it's only supposed to spin so far and he did it faster. Like if we had all of those negotiations on tape, now I'm feeling better for you if you do sue him. Because I was thinking the other story happened the other way where you volunteered to go on. And I'm like, I don't know how that's going to work. But if you're saying that David like begged you to go on and he was going to supposed to go slow and he did it that way and he coerced you and you can make it. It was like a job like David is your employer. You could try anything like that. You know, David has is going to have good lawyers. They're going to go over everything and, uh, and it's going to take a lot of money. That's the thing. People say you can sue, you can sue. It's not that easy, people. It costs a lot of money to sue somebody. And he has a good case, but it's still going to cost a lot of money. And you already see he's going through all these medical things right now. And it might be dragged on for years. And David probably has the money to spend on the top lawyers to drag it out as long as he wants. So when people are saying, yeah, 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 sue, 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 it's not that easy, folks. <laughs> Cody, you read a lot about law in, uh, yeah, when you were yeah, at, yeah. at summer camp? Yeah, of course. What, <laughs> is, for civil suits, is there a statute of limitation? I think like seven years or something. Then you better watch your motherfucking back for the next seven years. Yeah, yeah. Because I could easily hit that button. Deportation. Jail time for manslaughter. Boom. Yeah. Deportation. I'm sure this guy's about to get his, uh... His citizenship, he didn't get it yet? What's, does it take that long? Like, how long has it been? He needs to marry somebody. David, why don't you just marry, oh, I shouldn't say that. He needs to fall in love, find a nice person to marry. I should say it that way. You know, that you're in love with and marry, and just to get your, your citizen, just get it like that. Well, he didn't kill you, but. Attempted manslaughter. <laughs> is that what it is? What Attempted. would it be? Attempted manslaughter. Attempted manslaughter? What the heck? That's not even a thing. How's that a thing? Attempted manslaughter? No, it would be some kind of like an assault, right? It would be like an, like an assault charge. Like if you think he purposely injured you, it would be an assault charge. Because you didn't die. Oh. Oh, but unless you're saying right now you really think this dude was really, 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 really trying to, to off you. Yeah, then it would be, not even, don't say it like manslaughter. It would be like attempted murder. No, say it. The man was trying to off you. If we really broke it down and we, we had those really negative thoughts where I think in my head at night where he took me out there to swing me off of it for a good little play the laugh, play the laugh. That's what I think where he was like, so when he started, when he started swinging it that fast and I started screaming for my life knowing that this cannot end good. There's only one way this is going to end and it's going to be really fucking bad. For me and if I died... It would have been for the both of us, but to see him go on like nothing ever happened fucking hurts, but that's life. It's tough. Realize it early, kids, and then you won't be surprised and shocked like a fucking 26-year-old David that now is saying that he's he's the victim. <laughs> he's He said in the fucking documentary that he's the victim. It's insane. These guys were with me when, when I saw it when, when I was on FaceTime. And I saw the clip. You saw my reaction, right? You just wanted to walk it off after. I just want to see him do the right thing, but... He had two years to do the right thing. What do you mean, see him do the right thing? Time's up. If he calls me right now and says, hey, Jeff, hang mm -hmm. up. I hang up. He calls me again. Listen, man, I really... Do <laughs> if you see me, run the other way. <laughs> That's it now. You had two years, pal. 
here's my thing when he said that he thinks david did it on purpose you know for the laugh <sighs> the first time these two met they were in a car and jeff got pulled over and the cops coming up to the car and david is laughing 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 and making jokes kind of playing off the fact that jeff has a criminal record and like he was kind of making it a joke that like to the officer that jeff is guilty of something you know i think these guys want to see me go to jail <laughs> <laughs> all right guys they're about to find out the car stolen <laughs> jeff's gonna go to jail <laughs> <laughs> and jeff was like what the heck is this kid doing because um you know, it was very real to him dealing with the police. And uh, David was laughing, 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 laughing. Boom. I already saw then, Jeff, the first time you met David, this is what he did to you. Right then, you should have known something was off about David. Not off, just what he is. He thinks this is funny. But if that didn't tell you, Jeff, this is what should have told you. I don't know how long after that happened. But remember that stunt, you guys, where David recreated Jeff's whole entire apartment into a jail cell. I did a little bit of a makeover to your apartment. What'd you do? Surprise. Oh my god. <laughs> Shut it this is too much. I'm so happy to just clean this shit up. Like he had actors come in as prisoners, he had sheriffs, he had police officers, he had the booking stage, he had the lineup sheet. He did this man's whole apartment as a jail cell for like a four minute vlog. When I say a four minute vlog, on a vlog it probably only lasted like 30 seconds. You know, he did all of this stuff with a 30, for a 30 second gag. And the gag was that Jeff walks into his apartment and boom, his fare is back. He's in jail. And David was laughing and laughing and laughing. David thinks traumatizing people is funny, right? He's showing that, and he showed that to you twice, Jeff. We might not even be friends after the next fucking jail prank you do to me. But here's what happened. David pranks people, but people don't really prank him back. So around this time was when David and his girlfriend broke up. Whatever her name is, what's her name? Liza? David and Liza, his girlfriend Liza, broke up. This is the thing. David broke up with that girl and I haven't seen him with anybody since, right? You see when these guys, when they break up with somebody like their first love and it's like they're damaged, you can't even do anything with them after they're like so caught up. Like you would think David didn't have a heart until this whole thing happened and his reaction to breaking up with this girl. And I remember they had that breakup video and I was going to do something on that breakup video. I still might. I have theories about that breakup video. But that whole thing happened, right? And it really gutted him to the point where Natalie said the first time she came out to LA, it was right after, right around when David broke up with his girlfriend. And she said she came into the room and David was crying. And she said she'd never seen this guy cry before. She said she'd never seen this man. She knew him since a kid. She goes, I've never seen this guy cry. That's the first time I saw him cry. He was just in a funk and he was like, oh, I'm not crying, I'm not crying. But he was crying. Okay, I'm saying all this to show like he had feelings, whatever kind of feelings. He's not a robot. He had some kind of whatever feelings for his girlfriend. And then they broke up. Jeff got the bright idea to do a gag. You know how David likes to tease me about my ex-girlfriend's billboard? <laughs> King of pranks. Do you think her billboard would be enough to remind him every day if I paint that in his bedroom? Oh man, this is a touchy subject, huh? I joked around a little bit about this photo. David's ex-girlfriend and Aquaman. Mm, big muscle man. It's kind of like a nonsense gag to me. But when you saw it play out, like nobody was laughing. Everybody was nervous. David came in the room, saw the picture, kind of laugh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. but like nobody else was laughing. Nobody was like carrying on like how David would like laugh hysterically at all his vlogs when he pranks people. Everybody it was like, it's like you walked into a funeral. And at that point, right, I was like, Jeff. David does not like you, right? He does not like you. And the fact that he pranked you and then now you pranked him back, when you said that you stepped on that rope, you felt like David wanted to get something out of you. So he's spinning you faster, like he wanted to hear you scream. That was him getting you back. In my head, that was him getting you back. And it took him a while to find the right time to get you back. When you did that prank on him, he didn't find it funny. He was mad. That man was holding a grudge from then towards Jeff. Not only was Jeff was really popular amongst the crew, 
Jeff was doing his own thing and was being successful. He got the barbershop and that barbershop thing was so good. I love that barbershop show. And then he would use a lot of David's people in his stuff. He created his own reality with David's people. I don't think David liked that. He was doing too good. When this happened, and now when Jeff said, you know, I think he did it on, you know, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't really an accident, accident. I'm like, yeah, there's a reason why nobody pranks David. Or if you're going to prank David, you do a little stupid prank on David. You don't do a prank where it's his girlfriend, the one thing he cried about. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay, bet. This is my theory. That's why David spun him around that hard. He was mad. Not that he wanted whatever to happen, but he wanted to hear Jeff scream in terror so he could laugh. Why do I think that? Because that's what David does. That's what's funny to him. Daddy, 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 daddy.